and now. It is my honor to welcome to the stage this evening's special guest, Miss Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> What a great, 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 great joy for me to be here, to share the same space with all of you, my heroes and heroines. Because books have rescued me, books have delivered me, books have exalted me and helped me discover more of myself. I'm having flashback memories right now of getting my first library card at the Nashville Hadley Park Library. And being in awe that I got to take five books home and being so overwhelmed by the power of authors and their words. I couldn't understand how you all did that. And now for me to be able to stand in the same room with all of you who do that is such a privilege and great joy for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth Dickey and the whole team at the National Book Foundation. Thank you, LeVar Burton who loves books as much as I. And again, to the finalists, to the long listeners, to every single writer who has graced us this year with your words and with your wisdom. To all of you who faithfully labor at putting pen to paper, fingers to computer, creating inspired connections to our imaginations. Thank you for all the momentous relationships that you have built with us through the magic and the majesty and the simplicity of your words. So, the book club, Oprah's book club. I know there are a lot of book clubs now, but we're the OGs, okay? Hello. Back in 1996, the book club started on The Oprah Show because my producer, Alice McGee at the time, and I had our own private book exchanges going for years. And she suggested one day, she said, since you love books and authors so much, why don't you share your excitement with our viewers? And I said, Alice, you cannot do a show with authors <laughs> who write fiction because the audience is not going to know what we're talking about. And she said, they will if you give them time to read the book. And 27 years and 103 book club picks later, I am grateful for the sense of safety, the sense of purpose and growth that this community has given me. Every day I get invigorated by opening a book, often by reading that first sentence. First, I got myself born says Damien Fields on page one of Demon Copperhead. Thank you, Barbara King Solver. You know, until that moment, I never thought of it quite that way before, that we get to own our own entrance into the world. Or how about this? On a hot night in apartment C4, Blandine Watkins exits her body. She's only 18 years old but she spent most of her life wishing for this to happen. That was Tess Gunty for the rabbit hutch. I want to especially thank tonight the readers here and at home, the people who poured through all 735 pages of an epic novel set in India 
with me. Hello, Abraham Verghese and the Covenant of Water. Or wept over a memoir or opened their minds to the ideas of a nonfiction book about our culture and our world. Not to mention all those young people out there who found their voices in books written for them or by them. Hello, Amanda Gorman. I'm talking about the readers who picked up the color purple 40 years ago and found the kind of truth that I found in those pages. Dear God, I am 14 years old. I've always been a good girl. Maybe you can give me a sign letting me know what is happening to me. Truth that translated into a movie, into a Broadway musical, and now the movie version of that musical, opening this Christmas at a theater near you. That is the power of a story well told. Thank you, Alice Walker. It's been 24 years since my last time on this stage in front of this podium, and since then, as LeVar stated, between 2021 and 2022, the American Library Association saw a 70% increase in requests to ban books from public schools and libraries. And it's looking like this year is going to be even worse. Early data shows us that number has already risen by 20%. So over 75% of those books banned were specifically written for younger readers, 41% had LGBTQ themes or characters, and 40% had a main or secondary character of color. So who exactly is trying to keep these books off the shelves? It's not the majority of parents. This September, 67% of parents surveyed by the Every Library Institute agreed that banning books is a waste of time. Meanwhile, there's been dozens, of, dozens and dozens of bomb threats against libraries. Tracy Hall, the former director of the American Library Association, Hello, Tracy, says that at least 10 of last year's threats were verified and almost every case had been linked to somebody who was disgruntled about the right to read. Amanda Jones, a Louisiana school librarian, in July of 2022, went to a public library board meeting to speak out against an attempt to ban books. And that day, she showed up at that meeting as just a concerned citizen. She didn't say where she worked. She just spoke about the importance of having diverse books. Immediately, she had her work address leaked. People began posting nonstop, making accusations about her abusing the young readers at her library. Children she dedicated 23 years of her life to educating. She started getting death threats, all for standing up for our right to read. And two years later, she's still nervous to go out in her community. She has her groceries delivered, she says, but she's not stopped fighting against book bans or stopped advocating for access to diverse stories. The numbers back her up. This year, the nonprofit First Book found that just six months after diverse books were added to classroom libraries, classroom reading time increased by four hours per week. I was 15. I was 15 years old when I read my first diverse book, My Angelou's I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. And the whole world fell away from me. It was the first book at 15 I ever read with a black protagonist. That book gave a voice to my silences, my secrets. It gave words to my pain and my confusion of being raped at nine years old. Until Cage Bird, I didn't know that there was a language, there were words for what had happened to me or that any other human being on earth had experienced it. That's the power of books. And yet, and yet, I know why the Cage Bird Sing has been amongst the top 100 most banned or challenged books for each of the last three decades. It was the third most banned book from 1990 to 1999, and then in uh, 2020 to 2009, and then the 88th from 2010 to 2019, because there's so many other books ahead of it being banned. It's currently banned in libraries in Pennsylvania. And despite that, tonight at my table, I have the honor of sitting beside two-time, 
two-time National Book Award winner and author of my most recent book club selection, Let Us Descend, Jesmyn Ward. In 2022, Jesmyn's first novel, Salvage the Bones, was challenged in Guilford County, North Carolina. And thanks to the efforts of teachers and parents and students and citizens, just ordinary folks came together, stood together. The book remained in the high school curriculum because the community said it should and would. Make no mistake, to ban books is to snuff out the flame of truth of what it means to be alive, what it means to be aware, what it means to be engaged in the world. To ban books is to cut us off from one another, to shroud us in a solitary darkness, a soulless echo chamber. To ban books is to strangle off what sustains us and makes us better people. Connection and compassion, empathy, Understanding, And my hope is that kids will come to reading for the same reason that all of us in this room have come to reading. To see themselves in the characters they meet. To feel recognized. To feel understood. And when someone feels understood, they can understand. They can pick up a book about people who they have nothing in common with and cry for them, and root for them, and celebrate with them. That's how reading spills into our everyday lives, how it opens us to the world, the whole world, not just our cozy corner of it. So let us vow to keep our books right where they belong, in reach of everyone to choose for themselves what to read, because that, dear friends, is called freedom. And as you know, I'm a great believer in Toni Morrison who once said that the function of freedom is to free somebody else. So God bless you all here tonight for continuing to liberate us one page at a time. Thank you so much.